The following tutorial explains how to carry out basic statistical analysis in Scaffold Elements and follows Tutorial 2. Please watch the second tutorial before delving into this one. It is important to have your data organized properly before carrying out statistical analysis. Scaffold Elements uses log 10 precursor intensities for quantitative values. These are the values displayed in the samples view by default. Use the display type dropdown to change this to log 2 full change. Another dropdown will appear that allows you to set the reference. Elements contains a few statistical test options for determining statistical significance. A comparison of two groups can be carried out using a t-test. Comparing more than two groups can be done using a permutation test or an ANOVA. Open the quantitative analysis dialog either from the experiment drop-down menu or from the toolbar. Note the edit experimental design button. This will allow you to reset your CL, BRL, and TRL if needed. How your experiment is configured is displayed in the center of the dialog box. Here you have the option to choose which statistical test you would like to apply. Select ANOVA, then click on the Significance Level tab. This tab allows you to apply multi-test correction using two options. The default is the Benjamini Hochberg procedure to control the FDR. You can choose instead to use the Hochberg Step Up and Home Step Down procedure to control the family-wise error rate instead, or choose no correction. Here you can also set the significance threshold, which defaults to 0.05. Choose the default corrections and click Apply. A column displaying the ANOVA values for each analyte will be displayed in the samples view. Note the values are either white or highlighted green or orange. White cells are not significant, orange cells are significant before multi-test correction, and green cells are significant after correction. The quantitative analysis dialog allows you to remove categories from the statistical test if needed. Open the dialog again and note the checkboxes on the right hand side. Select the t-test slash ANOVA test option, then uncheck two of the treatments. Click Apply. The samples view will update to displaying a t-test of the two intruded treatment groups as opposed to the ANOVA using all of the groups. Note the p-value filter. This allows you to display only significant values either before or after correction. The volcano plot in scaffold elements is a convenient way to visualize data. In this plot, users can see the full change of an analyte compared to its p-value. Once again, dots representing p-values significant before correction are orange, and those significant after correction are green. The plot is interactive. Leave the action on zoom and draw a box to zoom in on a particular region. Change the dropdown to one of the add stars options to add stars to the selected analytes. These stars will then be shown in the samples view. Finally, you can change the reference category using the reference dropdown. Scaffold Elements has a principal component analysis built in. Click on the PCA tab to explore. Principal component analysis is the tool used to identify the underlying sources of variation in a dataset. PCA looks for patterns of expression among the analytes that can be used to group samples in meaningful ways. Note this tab is controlled by the experimental design you have set up in the organized view. Thus, updating the organization will change the PCA plots. This makes elements ideally suited to exploratory data analysis. The user's guide gives a detailed explanation of PCA and how to use it in scaffold elements.